Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Don't forget to subscribe, as I still see that a large amount of people who watch the videos every single day, thank you very much, are still not subscribed to the channel and hit the little notification bell as well. So here we are, it's getting closer, and now it looks like we might have a l little, little bit of a problem. The last four years have been a bit of a doozy for all of us in multiple ways, especially economically, because everything has kind of gone down. Even when we were told that things were okay, when the um, stock market was doing like quite well in 2021 and 2022, and it was mainly tech stocks that were doing kind of fine, uh, we're now seeing that the economic implications of 2008 and 2009 are still with us, but only like tenfold what they previously were. Where we currently are right now, at the time of me making this video, is the Federal Reserve of the United States of America is expected to lower interest rates in about five or six days, somewhere around there. There are a number of issues, however, because of their decision to do what they did to the economy, and basically we find ourselves in a very difficult spot that might be actually a little bit hard to come out of for the next couple of years. This is not to fear monger, it is more of a, a giving of news, if you will, because I personally am looking around online different websites, even within the cryptocurrency space. And a lot of people typically, normally, within crypto, uh, tend to, for some reason, have a different idea as to things that are happening comparative to the cryptocurrency market. They won't usually understand or look for information that what happened in 2020 and 2021 might affect the cryptocurrency market. What we are going to see in a couple of days is probably going to rattle markets regardless of what actually ends up taking place. The current expectations are, as we've gone over, one of two things. Either the Fed is going to lower interest rates or they're going to keep them the same. The pro <laughs> huge problem is that if they keep interest rates the same, world markets are probably going to tumble. Like tumble, tumble. Like, oh, remember the beginning of August when things like looked really, really bad and everything like collapsed at the exact same time? That kind of tumble. We're also like mixing into the soup. I don't know why this is mixing into the soup, but the news that we had recently about the Japanese central bank, for those of you who missed it, the reason why the markets dropped in August was because they, the Bank of Japan rose their interest rates from 0% to 0.25. And this apparently was one of the very few, if not last places on the planet where people could get like literally free money, 0% interest rate. And Japan is also famous for having a negative interest rate as well. If the Fed doesn't raise interest rates, we are going to have a repeat of that. Now, where we're standing, as we get ever closer to Fed Judgment Day, I don't know what we're supposed to be calling it there, a number of analysts are kind of saying that it might already be too little, too late, and or too much, even bigger of a problem. In that, if the Fed lowers interest rates by 0.25, it is indicative of, okay, the economy is in trouble. We have to lower it to ease off some of the pressure, and therefore markets can begin to move higher. The problem one there is that we heard that the Fed had a meeting in July where they all agreed that in July we should have already had an interest rate cut, and they all decided against it. And apparently there was also one earlier in the year as well. Therefore, a 0.25% cut would be insufficient in that we need something a little bit stronger and or we needed rate cuts already to happen, if that makes any sense. The other part is, um, over the last two or three weeks, with the anticipation of the potential of a 
rate cut nonetheless several. We've had a number of large banks come forward and say they're not only expecting a rate cut in uh, September, but they're also expecting one in um, November, potentially one in December and maybe one in January, but that's like a bit of a stretch. Most people are anticipating one, major banks are anticipating three. The banks are now discussing if the 0.25 is not enough and therefore a 0.5, like a half a point needs to be cut from the actual interest rate. The problem with that is that historically is, is like problem on problem on problem on problem. This is what happens when you print trillions of dollars out of thin air. Everyone is dealing with inflation and every, the entire world sits with bated breath for a man to stand at a podium and announce that he's lowering a number on a screen. See how broken the system is? A 0.5% rate cut would be indicative of trouble. Historically, whenever we've had someone do by half a point, it means that the economy is in like trouble, trouble. And they need to start cutting because if you cut an entire point, the, like the, 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 the system will collapse once again. So by announcing that they're going to do half an, a, a, a point basically means we should have done this before. We have to do this now. We're really sorry and we hope that things can kind of pick back up. The best scenario, best in this uh, dirty, dirty thing uh, would be a quarter of a point now, a quarter of a point in November and a quarter of a point in January. The problem with that is, until we fall by around a good, realistically, a good 2 to 3%, like a realistic 2 to 3% in the entirety of the interest rate, the consumer spending isn't going to pick up by that much. Uh, people getting mortgages is not going to pick up by that much. You don't go, there, there are many places around the world, in the US as well, where the interest rate was 0%. You remember we had 0%. You can't raise it to four, five, six, seven, eight percent and expect people to go rush back into the market. So even if you lower it, because even what the Fed does is a what's the term? It's like a like a reference for what banks should have. So even if the interest rate is four, five percent, banks are greedy, so they're going to start charging seven to eight percent. So when you have it really low, the banks will still have a 2 to 3%. And even at that number, a lot of people are quite wary of getting into even more debt than they currently are right now. So the other part actually is, even if we do get three interest rate cuts, and the last one is in January or the beginning of the one for that year is in January, a lot of these mega companies are still announcing that they're going to be laying off people because they're not making any money. There's been recently a lot of stuff in the news about consumer spending and how consumer spending isn't the way that it was before and consumer spending isn't as amazing as it needs to be or consumer spending. For those of you who don't know, I've said this before in other videos, but here's a refresher. You are a product. You are always a, pro a literal product of the system. You are a consumer. And I know that sounds crazy. I know it sounds tinfoil hatty and you go, that doesn't make any sense. No, you are you are meant to not be rich. And I, once again, for those of you who want books on economics or usually what I'm talking about, there are links in the description below that cover exactly what I'm going over. When you hear that consumer spending is down, when you hear that the economy is not doing well, they mean you. There's also a consumer um, savings index and it shows like how much people are saving comparative to other years. And that spiked in 2020 and 2021 sure you remember why, this was seen as negative. People aren't supposed to be saving their money. You're supposed to get your paycheck, pay your inflated rent, pay your insurance, pay for your food, pay for your car, your petrol, everything that you have. And at the end of the month, whatever you have left is meant to be further pushed back into the economy to keep it ripping and roaring. That's the point of you. That's the point of me. That's the point of us. We are meant to be consumers. So, in the last year and a half, consumer spending has dropped dramatically. People are getting fired. People don't have the money. People can't afford their rent. I've seen countless videos of people moving back in with their parents. People moving in with their grandparents. The entire family moving together just to literally try and save a dollar. 
And when you look on the news, they talk about consumer spending is down and this is touted as a negative thing because you're irrespective of what your living situation might be or how much money you don't have, you're supposed to be taking out debt to spend more. Do you understand how rotten the entire system is? Like rotten to the actual core, like not like a oh, it's rotten. Ha, ha. No, like the like the system is completely disgustingly broken. We are meant to be consumers for life. The problem that the Fed currently faces right now is that people aren't throwing all their money back into the market. So how do you alleviate this? You have to lower interest rates to let people know it's okay. Go get back into debt. Remember I told you in a number of other videos as well to start paying attention. There there are tons of videos on it. Start paying attention to all these things of like buy now, pay later. You only want to pay 10% now. You can pay it over the course of the rest of the year. The point is to get you spending again to get you back into debt because they know that when people get into debt, they're more likely to get further into debt. Most people, there have been thousands of studies. If you get $200 in debt, your mind will tell you, I mean, it's just $200. I can, I can kind of pay that back. When you get to $1,200, your mind conceptualizes. $1,200 is not that bad. If I put six, If I put $200 per month over six months, I can totally do it. Before you know it, you're 5000 in debt and the mind actually begins to shift and it goes, okay, well, I have to pay off that debt somehow, so I have to figure out another way to get something, but I still want other stuff. Like that other video we were just going over as well with these people who were talking about this lifestyle change. This woman refused. She was like, I, I can't understand how I'm supposed to buy less nice things. She's like, I need to like have these things so I put myself further into debt. The point is a perpetual debt cycle. That's the point of all of this. And this is not to drag Bitcoin into it, but that's the point of Bitcoin. It's meant to be a digital system where there is no debt. You have what you have. It's meant to be able to be given out and spread to the masses without having like debt incurred on the amount of Bitcoin that you have. That's the point of crypto. That's the point of decentralization. But people keep forgetting about that and they rush back to the old system. And then we end up in situations like this, where we're once again pandering, please lower interest rates, not a lot, but not too much, and not a little bit either, because I, I need them to go down so that, this is, this is where we keep ending up over and over, but I think it's, uh, I personally think that this is just the way the society is and will always be. I think people, if we can be honest here, I think people don't actually care. This is me, my, my, my vantage point. They don't really care about the economy as long as they are cushy, as long as they're sitting on a soft bed. They don't really care about the actual macro situation or how bad that things might actually get. So I think in a lot of situations like this, this won't directly, indirectly affect a lot of people. But when we do eventually get an interest rate uh, drop or multiple of them and asset prices begin to move back up and inflation also moves back up because that's how money is created. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you go to the bank. I need a $400,000 mortgage for a house and they literally enter it and click enter. And then that new money actually gets created. That's how debt and money get created completely out of thin air. So... Yes, we are in a, um, I want to say bad spot. That seems a little bit dramatic, but it may be the accurate words for what's currently going on. Uh, Whether the Fed will actually cut rates is up to them. If they don't do it, expect a gigantic drop. There are also, not to, you know, be that guy, but there are multiple world banks who are saying that even if they drop it once again, by 0.25%, that markets might still go down because the cut is not enough and it's too late. And if they do it by 0.5%, markets might still go down because it's an indicator of economic turmoil and that we might already be in a recession, which we are, that we might already be in a recession that might only get worse. So yeah, um... To the Fed, I say, I I hope it was all worth it. I hope you printing tons of money uh, that they gave to companies and corporations was worth it. Because don't forget that that $1,200 check, that's not even rent for like 80% of people. And it was a one-time check. So 
I hope it was worth it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. However, um, it's not that I'm not optimistic so much as I'm trying to be a realist. And the last four years have kind of shown me that even the people in power, like, you know that they don't know what they're doing, but this is kind of like the dirty cherry on top of the moldy cake. And you're like, oh, these people should literally be fired because they're destroying the world's economy. Right, T.O. Happy video, right? Crazy. I do hope that you somehow enjoyed. I do hope that you're all saving. I do hope that you have all created a, a um, an emergency savings account. Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you still got to still gotta do it because no one knows what's going to happen because a lot of these companies are still laying people off and there are going to be more layoffs regardless of what uh, the, 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 the Fed cuts actually end up being or not being. So... Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.